dates, I think. Okay, guys, notice we're suddenly beginning to climb. We're now no longer at the level with the uh, Sea of Galilee. Up until now, from the moment that we started uh, driving along the East Shores, everything has been flat, but we've just started climbing a hill. And in just a moment, we're going to be at the uh, part where you'll be able to look sort of sharp right, sort of look behind you, and then you'll see that that hill falls steeply down to the water. And this is it right here. You can see that it drops. In just a moment, you'll t I'll have you look sharp right. And there it is. The hill drops steeply down. The Sea of Galilee is about 20 feet below its level, but you can see that the water comes, the, the hill here just drops very steeply. Now look forward and you'll see that everything in front of us is also very flat, all the way to the southern end of the Sea of Galilee. So the only place where that story could have taken place is this hill here. Remember, there was no road, so the hill came from the left, your left side, straight down, and then just suddenly dropped in this area to the water. And uh, we know that there were two types of pigs, by the way, living here at the time. One of them still lives here to this day, and that's a wild boar. And it has a very strong instinct. If it feels threatened, it'll run to the water for protection. Uh, they're good swimmers. They've got strong legs. They'll actually go to the water in summer just to cool themselves down. They'll uh, swim in the water just to cool their bodies down sometimes. Uh, the second type of pig that we know lived here at the time was the domesticated pig. And that's a type of pig that is domesticated, has the same instinct as the wild boar, but it's deceptive in their case because they have shorter stubbier legs and they can't swim. And so what most likely happened, we know that those pigs were owned, so they were most likely the domesticated pigs because the shepherds asked Jesus to leave the area because they were worried about the financial hit that they've taken when the pigs all drowned. So probably when the uh, demons entered those pigs, they, they were sort of uh, spooked by it, felt threatened, and their instinct was to run for safety to the water. And that is the same instinct as a wild boar, but in the case of the domesticated pigs, it was a fatal thing. They ran to the water and then drowned. I'm curious why we're not um, heading back down on the, on the east side when we go around the lake. We're not coming, yeah, we're going all the way around. We're going to be in basically the east side of the lake. We're not coming down to the Jordan River on the east side, but going up back around, coming down on the west side. Um, because we didn't want you to be starving hungry, what we would have done, uh, we would have done the boat ride, Mount of Beatitudes, Tabha where we just were, Capernaum that we passed a few minutes ago, then done lunch, and then to the southern end, to the baptismal, and then up to the hotel. But because time was getting late and we was we saw that if we did Capernaum you wouldn't be at lunch before 1 30 or 2 at which point you might be starving and we want you to be able to enjoy Capernaum and be relaxed there because it's a great sight um, we're doing lunch first then we're taking you back to Capernaum and then we're going to go to the baptismal site it's only because we don't want you guys to uh, so the baptismal site is on the north end no it's on the southern end so we're sort of backtracking to Capernaum to the north end and then coming back around to the southern end. But that's just so that you don't, you guys don't get low blood sugars and start losing your concentration. All right, we've almost arrived. There's two sets of bathrooms here. One is just uh, before you enter the restaurant area on the left and one is at the very end of the restaurant area. They're going to ask us to sit at very specific tables that have uh, cones at a specific color. Every group has a tables allocated to them by cones uh, so just give me a moment to find out what cones what color they want us at and then we all need to sit at the tables where those color cones are the time is now quarter to one um, John does an hour sound good yes okay quarter to two What's the name of this, kibbutz? this uh, is kibbutz Ein Gev if you look at your maps right at the middle of the eastern shores you'll see Ein Gev Shmulek, you might tell us what a kibbutz is. Oh, a kibbutz, thank you, is a communal settlement. It's a system that worked very well in the first few decades before Israel became a state and the first few decades after Israel became a state where means were scarce, life was tough, so people just got together, a bunch of people got together, pulled all their money together, bought some property, uh, started some orchards, a cow shed, some sheep, uh, a dining room where they all had three meals a day, 